the most popular game show ever, The Cards of Fate. The show where contestants control people's destinies and win valuable cash and prizes. And here is the star of The Cards of Fate, the hostess with the mostest, Buffy, you betcha! Well, thanks for that swell introduction, Cinnamon. And welcome again, ladies and gentlemen, to the Cards of Fate. What an exciting show we have for you today. First, let's start the ball rolling by introducing our first contestant, Cinnamon. That's right, Buffy. Our first contestant is a construction worker from Erie, Pennsylvania. He's single, enjoys skiing, reading, and says that he's always dreamed of being a contestant on the Cards of Fate. Let's say hello to Nick Koslowski. <laughs> Welcome to the Cards of Fate, Nick. We're sure glad to have you here. I'm thrilled to be here, Buffy. My friends still cannot believe I'm gonna be on the show. Well, maybe they'll believe you if they see you driving home in that brand new car you can win in our bonus round. Wow. <laughs> so you're in the construction business. That must be fascinating work. Well, actually, all I do is carry bricks around all day, but hopefully you don't have to do it anymore with your well-known here. <laughs> well, that's the kind of spirit we like here on the Cards of Fate. So welcome aboard, Nick, and let's see if we can win you some of that cash. <laughs> now you folks at home know how we play the game. We randomly pick a person in an important moment of their life, and we freeze the action. That's when Nick takes over. If he can answer the question on the card of fate, he'll win some valuable cash and prizes, and fate will favor our lucky contestant. But if Nick should answer incorrectly, <coughs> he'll lose the cash and prize, and the card of fate will deal a blow to some poor, pathetic soul. Well, Nick, ready to go? Sure thing, Buffy. Then let's play the cards of fate. Cinnamon, where are we going for our first round? Buffy, we head to Williston High School in Rugby, North Dakota. My goodness, all the way to the Flickertail State? Let's watch. Hey, Bobby, did you get that limo? Hold it down. I don't want the whole school to know. It's supposed to be a surprise. Oh, I'm sorry. But did you get it, though? Yeah. One white stretch limo with a wet bar, a TV, a car phone, and a very, very large back seat. Damn, how much did it cost? I figure about three weeks of working at McDonald's, one month of my allowance, and half of my birthday money. Well, are you sure it's worth it? Are you kidding? This is the last thing I had to get. For once in my life, I'm gonna go first class. This will be the prom date to end all prom dates. Designer tux, orchids from Hawaii, limo, the helicopter tour around town with champagne, and a late night dinner at Le Chateau Escargot. Le Chateau Escargot? I heard of that place. My parents went there at their 25th anniversary. That place cost them $250. Are you sh aren't you going a little bit overboard? I mean, this is your first date with Beth. That's right. But once this date is over, she'll be begging me for many, many more. <laughs> hey, Bobby. I just can't wait till Friday. I'm so excited. Yeah, me too. I just got my dress yesterday. It's strapless. Well, it looks like love's about to bloom in rugby, but not before Nick gets a chance to cash in on it. Okay, Nick, for $200 and a fantastic prom night for the kids, what was the name of Captain Stooping's adorable little daughter on the love boat? The, the love boat? That's right. Um, uh, Cindy. Oh, no. It was, of course, Vicky. So I'm afraid no money there, Nick. Let's see what happens to our own little love couple. Aren't you going a little bit overboard? I mean, it's your first date with Beth. That's right. But once this date is over, she'll be begging me for many, many more. Hey, Bobby. Hi, Beth. All ready for Friday? Well, remember how I said I go to the prom with you because me and Jimmy broke up? Well, guess what? We just got back together last night. So I'm going to go to the prom with him. I'm real sorry. Wish I could talk some more, but I forgot my dress. It's strapless. So I guess all those things to order required non-refundable deposits. Well, if you look at the bright side, is uh, 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 
Uh, oh, could you look at the time? Uh, I, I gotta go, you know, open us on, you know. Talk to you later, man. That was too bad. Looks like he'll be all dressed up with no place to go. <laughs> <laughs> but that's life in the car to face. <laughs> now, okay, don't get discouraged. We have lots of time left for you to earn those big bucks. I'm ready, Buffy. Then let's head to the second round. Cinnamon? Buffy, we head to West Palm Beach, Florida, and the home of Susan Zimmerman. Hey, Susan, you got a letter today. I think it's your SAT scores. Great, my whole life in one stinking little envelope. Here we go again. Tomorrow, every kid in school is going to be running around asking each other what scores they got. If you got a higher score than they did, they think that you're lying, or that you think you're smarter than they are, and then they think you're some stuck-up snob. But if you get a lower score than they did, they give you this look of pity as they try not to smile because they did so much better than you. And then they say things like, it doesn't matter that much, you can always retake them, or you can always go to community college and transfer. My life is going to be a living hell. Okay, why don't you just open it and see how you did before you have a hernia. I can't. You open it. Well, the suspense is killing me. Cinnamon, what is he playing for? Nick is playing for the pizza machine by Wanko. For the best homemade pizza ever, use the Wanko pizza machine. Piping hot pizza with any topping in a matter of minutes. When you think pizza, think Wanko. Fantastic! And what does fate hold for Susan? Susan will receive a 1600 on her SAT scores and a full scholarship to Harvard if Nick can answer the card of fate. Alrighty, Nick. Beautiful and glamorous pop star and teen idol Tiffany has scored numerous top 10 hits with her indescribable voice. With what number one song did Tiffany first hit the charts? Who? No, sorry. Well, you got a 430, dear. Damn it! Is that math or verbal? That's a combined score, dear. <laughs> now, now, Susan, it doesn't matter. I didn't want to ruin your surprise until your father came home, but seeing as how upset you are, I think I'd better. Surprise? You got a call from a school that wants to give you a full paid scholarship. Who? Who? Harvard State Tech? It's called the Diesel Institute of Technology. They train truck drivers. too well there at all. I guess not. <laughs> Don't worry, Nick, be happy, because right now it's time for a speed round. Cinnamon? Buffy, we boogie on down to graduation night at Central High School. And Mary Young. <laughs> and now, ladies and gentlemen, it gives me Great pleasure to announce the 1991 Elizabeth Dobbs Memorial Award for Academic Achievement and Student Leadership. It is awarded to that young man or woman who exemplifies the highest standards that we at Central High strive to maintain. And with that award, it also carries a $2,000 scholarship. And now, Without further delay, this year's Elizabeth Dobbs Memorial Award for Academic Achievement and Student Leadership goes to... 
Nick, the Brady Bunch, I was the maid. Name our boyfriends. The butcher. He's the butcher. Yeah, but what's his name? Uh, I don't know. Rebecca Jean Tuskowski. Congratulations. And now, on this happy note, we conclude another commencement at Central High. I'd like to extend my very best wishes to the classes of that we have. Excuse at me, Dr. Wilson? You forgot to call my name. Sorry, who are you? Susan Lynn Zimmerman. Zimmerman? Zimmerman, Zimmerman. Oh, yes, here we are. Oh, would you look at here? The future history final. Looks like you'll be attending summer school. But thank you for pointing out the error. <clears throat> Excuse me, ladies and gentlemen. I, I would like to address an error in the system. The name Susan Lynn Zimmerman should not have been in the list of graduates. We certainly apologize for any confusion this might have caused. <clears throat> and now, before we conclude the festivities, how about one more musical selection from our outstanding band? Gosh, that moment's probably gonna hunt her for the rest of her life. <laughs> oh, well, we've got a lot more fun in store for you in the rest of the show. But first, let's take a minute for a quick word from one of our sponsors. Don't go away. We're off. Damn it, Ted. If you can't get the opening music cue right, I swear I'll find a director who will. Sorry. You're always sorry, and the cue is always wrong. Did New York fax those overnights yet? Yes, they just... Well, then why aren't they down here? I was supposed to have those signed and on Art's desk yesterday. If I catch any flack from Art about being late with this report, you'll wish you never left Wisconsin. Now get me those papers now! Um, uh, uh Miss Shubetcha? Oh, God. That was horrible, wasn't I? What? I knew it. I'm not real enough. My agent says I need to be more real. Do you think I'm real? Well, yeah, sure. <laughs> oh, you're just saying that to be nice. I'm not real at all. I just know it. Uh, no, no, I think you're great. You're much more real than the other game show hosts. Oh, thank you. You're so nice to say so. Of course, I know I got me real. It's just that stupid agent of mine. Just because he heard a rumor that Art Faber had lunch with that idiot Skippy Harris, he assumes that the network is looking for a replacement for me, Skippy Harris. <laughs> like he's real. Um, Miss Shubetcha, I was wondering if you could tell if me... If only my demographics weren't so bad! I beg your pardon. My demographics! I don't do very well with the housewives 32 to 67. That's the number one viewer pool for the cards of fate. I do great with young men 16 to 21. But they're all in school when the show is on. Why didn't I renegotiate my contract last year? I knew I should have. I knew I should have. Why was I so stupid? I've got to call my agent. Um. Hello? Hello? I was wondering if you could tell me when the show was going to be on. I know you're taping five shows today, so I wasn't sure when. I'm sorry I haven't done better so far. I really do well at home. I always know all of the answers. Last year, I won $500,000. Of course, I would just pretend, but that's why I was so sure I could win. My whole family will be watching. And all of my friends, too. They, they had this big party for me and everything. So I'm going to try real hard to do better in the second half. I, I won't let you down. If, if you could just tell me when the show's going to be on, I mean, how does it work? On in 10. Great, we're down another three points this month. If we fall out of first place, there's going to be a lot of people around here looking for jobs. And five, four, three, two. And welcome back to the Cards of Fate. <laughs> Today's contestant, Nick Koslowski, hasn't put any points on the board. But there's only the fabulous treasure chest of cash and prizes just around the corner. Here on the Cards of Fate. And
And here's Cinnamon to tell us what's next. Buffy, we move on out to Southeastern North Carolina State College. Excuse me, is this room 115? Yeah, I'm Larry Parks, just moving in. Then I'm your roommate, my name is Bambi. What? This is room 115 Spalding Hall, isn't it? Then I'm your roommate. <laughs> Nick, you have three seconds to tell me the name of the bailiff and Judge Judy. Uh, Jones! No, it's Smith. No, it's Jones. <laughs> oh, silly me. This is 511 Golding Hall. Oh, well. We call someone at 3 in the morning and listen in. And what's today's call all about, Cinnamon? It's a call to tell Alice Walker of Chicago, Illinois, that she has won $10 million in the state lottery. Wow! And by the way, Nick, if you get the question on the card of fate correctly, you'll win a cool 5000 for yourself. <laughs> okay, Cinnamon, let her in. Hello? Nick, name five famous pigs. Uh, Porky, Petunia, Wilbur, uh, the, the little pig who went to the market. Uh... Ooh, you were so close. Hello? Hello? Mom, is that you? Mommy. What, what's the matter? I can't hear you. What? Are, are you crying? What? Daddy's dead? But how? Well, where was he? He's only 63. How could he have a heart attack? And who's there with you? Are you okay? Uh, have you called Mike? Mm -hmm. I'll catch the first flight out in the morning. Okay. I love you too, Mom. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye. Whoops, there goes 10 million bucks. Her, her father died? Yeah, real shame. Sometimes fake can be cruel. Too bad you didn't get that last pig. You mean, if I'd gotten the question right, he'll still be alive? Well, sure, sport. That's the name of the game. No one told me we'd be life or death. I killed that man. He would have died anyways. Let's 
eventually. Besides, if you had gotten the question right, she would have been rich. But I didn't get it right. <laughs> hey, you don't have to tell us that. <laughs> I don't feel very well. <laughs> That's too bad, isn't it? But hey, life goes on. And speaking of going on, it's time for our bonus round. Nick, you haven't been too successful so far, but you can make it all up here in our bonus round. Cinnamon? That's right, Buffy. Nick will have a chance to win a 1992 Corvette convertible and $10,000 in cash. <laughs> An incredible prize package that can be all yours, Nick. Can you do it? I don't think so. Far out, Cinnamon, where is our final destination for today? It's Mercy Hospital in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Let's take a look. What happened? Where in the hell were you? I got stuck in a stupid business meeting. What happened? I got a call from school. She, she got dizzy at lunch and passed out. They called 911 and brought her in an ambulance. Is she all right? She's awake. She seems fine, but... But what? They, they want to run all these tests on her. They, they want to do a CAT scan. What for? They think there might be a, a tumor. Oh my god. They're not sure of anything. They just want to check her out. They told me it could be a hundred other things, but they just want to make sure she's all right. She's only seven years old. She's just a little girl. She can't have a tumor. I know that, but they just want to cover themselves up in case of lawsuits and stuff like that. Where is she now? Why aren't you with her? They're getting her ready for tests, and they told me to wait out here. Fill out the form for me. I'll take care of this. You wait here, okay? Fine. Oh dear God. <laughs> Please, I'm a little girl, be alright. Holy cow. Certainly have a lot of emotion there, folks. That's what makes The Car to Fate such a wonderful show. You never know when you're gonna get choked up like that. And I really mean that, sincerely, from the bottom of my heart. But say, Cinnamon, besides The Car and Cash for Nick, what's that plucky little girl playing for? Little Jennifer is playing for a clean bill of health if Nick wins the bonus round. And if Nick loses? I'm afraid. It's terminal. Thanks so much, Cinnamon. Well, there you have it, Nick. Now let's win you that bet. I, I, I have to quit. What? I, I just don't want to do this anymore. But what about the money, the car? I, I don't care about that. I just, I can't be responsible for that little girl dying. I, I just want to get out of here. Well, Nick, you should have thought about that before we started. It's a little too late to quit now. What do you mean? I mean that once the game has started, it has to be finished. Rules are rules. If you don't answer the last question, you will forfeit the game, lose the money and the car, and unfortunately for that little girl, her life. That's not fair. You're absolutely right. But there's not a dang thing you can do about it now, is there? Oh yeah? Just watch me leave. <laughs> Uh-oh, you know what that means, ladies and gentlemen. Otto! Oh, no. Well, Buffy, today Otto is using the 9mm Glockenspiel Semi-Automatic Night Stalker. With a muzzle velocity of over 850 feet per second, the Night Stalker can terminate any target you aim at, animal, vegetable, or mineral. When you want a sure kill, think Glockenspiel. Buffy? Wait a minute. What's Otto for? Otto's to shoot you. What? But only if you try to quit the show before it's over. This is insane! You can't do this! Apparently, Nick, you didn't read the fine print on that contract we had you sign. Sucks for you. I'm leaving! Wait, wait. You know what that means! It's the end of the show, and Nick, since you haven't scored any points on the board, you'll have to take the death guard. Otto's gonna shoot me! Oh, Nick, don't be silly. You get to choose whether or not Otto shoots you. Well, I choose not. Fantastic! A good choice, Nick. Well, good for you. 
Not so good for a little Jennifer. Looks like she gets a tumor. Aww. But why? Nick, Nick, you got the death guard. That means that someone has to die. That's either you or little Jennifer. If you want her to live, all you have to do is say so, and she'll be fit as a fiddle. And Otter here will blow your brains out. This is not right. Maybe not, but she get fantastic ratings. I won't do it. I won't decide. Fine then. We'll kill you both. Otto? Wait a minute, wait a minute. Then just give me some time to think. Sure thing, Nick. Take all the time you need. Because right now it's time for a quick word from one of our sponsors. <laughs> but don't go away. We'll be right back to hear Nick's answer here on the Cards of Fates. 